wonderful. Nice to see so many um, faces in the crowd. Uh, before I talk about my research, I'd just like to uh, mention one thing. Um, an individual by the name of Jimmy Button couldn't be here today. Jimmy received a spinal cord injury and after years of rehabilitation managed to get himself onto a bicycle and is, has been cycling across this country to raise money for this center and he's currently in Houston and he's going strong so could we give a round of applause for Jimmy? <laughs> Just a, a real wonderful example of uh, rehabilitation and um, you know the passion of somebody's will to do something. So my hat's off to him. So um, just a quick run through uh, my work. We've had some really nice developments over the, la over the last year. Uh, the first treatment that uh, I developed for spinal cord injury, I'd taken some technology from uh, Dr. Tom Lane and applied it to spinal cord injury. And it altered the immune response to spinal cord injury. And i um, really, really pleased to say that a phase two clinical trial ended and has, the data has now been analyzed and although we invented that thing for spinal cord injury and Tom for multiple sclerosis, we ended up going into the clinic in rheumatoid arthritis and ulcerative colitis because the clinical trials were cheaper and faster to do. And the idea being get it through the clinical trials as fast as we can and then market it to all of those indications including acute spinal cord injury. And I'm, I'm just absolutely overjoyed to say that Bristol-Myers Squibb just completed a phase two multinational clinical trial and 83% of the individuals uh, that were diseased uh, were significantly better. So I'm really, really happy about that. It, I think it bodes very, very well for its use in acute spinal cord injury. This is a treatment that must be given within about 12 hours of a spinal cord injury. But in these other indications, both uh, rheumatoid arthritis and ulcerative colitis, it looks like it's, it's a really great success. So let's hope that it does as well in SCI. Um, moving on to... Uh, um, the Geron clinical trial, um, some technology I developed in taking stem cells and making them into a spinal cord cell type called an oligodendrocyte um, has gone to the clinic. Um, it took us $45 million and nine years to do it. Now that's extraordinarily long and extraordinarily expensive because that was the first time that a human embryonic stem cell treatment had ever been approved by a regulatory body anywhere in the world. So. Um, that was an extraordinary large amount of money. It's usually not that, quite that expensive. But nonetheless, it was a great victory. We were, um, several years ago, we were awarded uh, the right to begin the trial, and then we were put on hold, and then we were awarded it again, and then put on hold again, and it got lifted. Six months ago, the first patient was treated in Atlanta, and um, we, it's going to be a couple of years before we hear anything more from that clinical trial because 12 individuals have to be treated and followed for two years. So that's two years after the 12th spinal cord injured patient. Um, I think that if the trial was going to go down, it would go down because of a catastrophic event to the patients who have been treated so far. The fact that Geron's opening up new treatment centers right now and we've not heard bad news. And I tell you, I check my iPhone every single morning that I wake up. <laughs> Uh, says that uh, suggests that things are going very, very well there. And during the last year, we've also expanded that in my laboratory to cervical spinal cord injury, so we've published some papers showing that it also works in the cervical spinal cord. Um, the mechanism is both remyelination and also tropic supports. So these things secrete tremendous amounts of growth factors. And so it's suitable for a, a newish type of injury two, two weeks after spinal cord in injury. And then uh, more recently, I've been developing um, a treatment using motor neuron progenitors, another high purity derivation. Stem cells make every cell in your body. This time we push them to become motor neurons, the cells that seed your spinal cord and control every moving thing in your body. Um, I originally envisaged this for a spinal cord injury treatment, but that would be very difficult as we have to get those cells to grow out of the spinal cord out to a peripheral target. That's a combination therapy of the motor neurons plus something to draw them out to muscle. We're working on that now, so that's in the research phases, but I'm pleased to say that the, the strategy to get to the clinic is um, going extraordinarily well. So the, the motor neurons are being, um, uh, the idea is to put them into diseases of motor neuron loss prior to spinal cord injury, so we only need the single treatment. So we've designed a clinical trial for babies, infants with type 1 spinal muscular atrophy, 
and uh, we generated a 4,000 page IND application to begin clinical trials. It was reviewed by the FDA in October, November and December, I'm sorry, December, or January, February, and they came back with a clinical hold, which is very, very um, much to be expected. But I'm really pleased to say that the issues of that clin clinical hold are very manageable, and it should be a very short clinical hold. So there are issues they've asked us to attend to before we start in humans, and so I expect to be um, getting into humans with that clinical trial very, very quickly while we're working out the second treatment to draw the motor neurons out to muscles for chronic spinal cord injury. In addition, um, we're working on a, a separate treatment for chronic spinal cord injury. I can't, I'm not going to talk about that too much right now. It's something that I, I dreamt up a good decade ago, but the tools have now become available to do it. And it's basically a, a way of tricking the spinal cord, many cells in the spinal cord, to revert back to an embryonic state, which is pro-regenerative. So it's a, it's a very different style of approach, not transplanting anything at all, but trying to uh, manipulate the genes of, the, of certain cells of the spinal cord in order to make it pro-regenerative. So that's early stage research, but it's, uh, it's, you know, it's looking promising. So the theme of this is multiple shots on goal. Uh, any one of them hit, I think it's a major victory, but uh, I think we've, um, we've got a good shot, a few of these things hitting and um, a few more tricks up our sleeve. So thanks very much everybody.